Welcome to Baja Wind to the South. I'm Denitza Garcia. And I'm Olga Sanchez de la Vega. And in this occasion, we are in one of the main avenues here in Tijuana, just a few steps from the border. And today, we're going to have an amazing show for you. But first, we're going to find out what Force Mexico named the number one hospitality location in all of Mexico. You know where that is? Oh my God. It's here in Baja. Wow! So let's go and see where that is going to be at. Valle de Guadalupe, located in the Baja California region of Mexico, has been named the most hospitable place in Mexico according to the Travel Review Awards by Booking.com in 2023. The awards are based on the reviews and ratings of guests who have stayed at accommodations in various destinations across the country. Valle de Guadalupe is a wine region known for its scenic vineyards and excellent wineries. The valley has become increasingly popular among tourists in recent years and has emerged as a must-visit destination in Mexico. The valley boasts a range of accommodations from luxury hotels to charming bed and breakfast, providing guests with a variety of options for their stay. According to the reviews on Booking.com, Valle de Guadalupe stood out for its warm and friendly hospitality with guests praising the welcoming nature of the locals and the attentive service provided by the accommodations in the area. Visitors to Valle de Guadalupe also appreciated the stunning natural beauty of the valley and the delicious food and wine available. Other destinations that were recognized in the Travel Review Awards by Booking.com for their hospitality include Huasca de Ocampo, Peña de Bernal, Cipolite, Holbox, Mazunte, Chignahuapan, Pátzcuaro, Comitan de Dominguez, and Jalapa. If you're looking for a welcoming and hospitable destination for your next trip in Mexico, Valle de Guadalupe is a must-visit destination. Hello everyone, in Baja Window to the South, today we're going to talk about art and culture. We're here with Tere Rique, the head of Opera de Tijuana, and she's going to tell us all about what's going on right now, events coming up, and we're very happy about it. Muchísimas gracias, Tere, eh, por Muchas tenernos gracias. aquí en tu casa, Opera de Tijuana, y para que nos platiques todo lo que tienen preparado para este año. Al contrario, muchas gracias a ustedes por estar aquí. <ríe> Linda, y yo creo que podemos empezar ahora con que nos diga, pues, qué es la ópera de Tijuana, ¿verdad? Para que la audiencia esté al tanto. Bueno, la ópera de Tijuana es una organización civil sin fines de lucro y este año está cumpliendo 23 años, 23 años de estar trayendo la música, el canto, la danza, porque la ópera es una de las artes más complejas que, en la que inciden todas estas disciplinas artísticas. Y bueno, pues dentro del programa que tenemos este año, vamos a presentar el viernes 21 de abril un evento recaudatorio. Es un evento que hacemos anualmente para poder auspiciar proyectos que hacemos de manera gratuita durante el año. Este proyecto eh, ya es la cuarta vez que lo vamos a hacer, va a ser en el Cubo del Centro Cultural Tijuana, próximo 21 de abril, con un programa muy bonito, un programa que hemos llamado Romanticismo Latino. Vamos a tener... Voy a venir. Ah, perfecto, excelente. La canción es maravillosa, Voy a que llorar. te remontan a la época. Ay, no, no, qué maravilla. Sí, sí, sí. Bueno, pues tenemos como invitados especiales a Gabriela Bojorquez, Salvador Padilla, el maestro José Medina es el director artístico, no solamente de este programa, sino de toda la organización. Y como invitados especiales, el trío Bolero Kings, que antes eran wow. los Panchos. Así wow, que bueno, ay, pues ay. Vamos, vamos a estar de manteles largos, ojalá que nos puedan acompañar. Es un, es un programa precioso y además el evento incluye cena y vino. ¡Guau! Wow, pues, ¡Qué pues, rico! Qué Así ¡Qué es. delicia! Y si ustedes adquieren sus boletos, también son deducibles de impuestos. ¡Súper! Entonces... Tenemos que estar aquí el abril 21, cena, vino, 
ópera, show, romanticismo sí. y qué más, Imagínate. qué más queremos. Ahora, yo creo que nos interesa saber dónde podemos comprar los boletos, o sea, para que ellos estén enterados, claro, porque claro. aparte tiene un propósito, Tere, todo claro, esto, ¿no? Que claro. precisamente recabar fondos para los eventos venideros, ¿verdad? Así es, eh, cada año en el primer trimestre del año eh, iniciamos la campaña de procuración de fondos, precisamente para poder eh, cubrir los, los, el costo de los proyectos. Uh -huh. Y bueno, este evento que sí también eh, su propósito es recaudar fondos para este fin, eh, eh, pues los boletos se pueden adquirir aquí en nuestras oficinas y nos ponemos de acuerdo, pueden marcar el teléfono que aparece en la pantalla uh -huh. y con mucho gusto nos coordinamos para hacérselos, eh, para entregárselos o para darles la dirección para que puedan acudir aquí a la oficina. Me encanta. Lo, lo hacemos de manera fácil, sencilla. Uh -huh. Perfecto. Eso, eso pues ya también. sabemos, Tere, un placer. Eh, entonces, dinos cómo podemos seguirlos en, en, la, en las páginas de internet. En redes, estamos en, en Facebook como Tijuana Ópera y eh, Ópera Tijuana también uh -huh. y en Instagram como Ópera de TJ. Well, thank you so much, Tere, for all this wonderful information. So if you like opera, you're a fan, and you want to enjoy this, or also donate, you can do this in Opera de Tijuana. You have all the info on the screen. And, well, remember, the dinner will be in El Cubo, en El Secut, and April the 21st at 8, okay? It's gonna be a great show, great dinner, excellent wine, a wonderful place. I invite you all to come and enjoy, all right? And, well, thank you again. Thank <laughs> you. Wonderful. And now we're going to go with Chef Martin San Roman and let's see what he is cooking for us. Mwah. Hello, my name is Martin San Roman. We are here in Tijuana at Atelier de Martin and welcome to Window to the South. Well, in this occasion, we are going to do a uh, mostly European pizza, okay? I will do it with some mussels, anchovies, shrimp, and of course the pizza sauce, or tomato pizza sauce, some uh, green, uh, yellow, and red uh, pimentos, and red onions, and of course, a cheese. So let me start with a, this preparation. I have my pizza dough already pre-baked, okay? And I would like, I always like to do it with olive oil and a little bit of garlic. So I make sure that I brush the outside so it can have a nice color, you know, when it's baked. And believe me, it's going to give it a very nice flavor. As you can see, you can see the chunks of garlic. Well, I'm gonna go ahead I put all the pieces of garlic into the pizza. Right there, you know, it looks beautiful. Then I will put my pizza sauce right here in the middle. Okay, we have to make sure just everything is even. And now uh, here at Atelier de Martin and Original de Pastel de Crepas, you can come during lunch time and they enjoy these uh, amazing uh, pizzas, okay? So then, I will go ahead and put some of the cheese. Lots of cheese, because I love cheese. In this case, uh, we're using some of Edam cheese and mozzarella, okay? Well, I got the cheese. I'm gonna put some of the bell peppers. I had to make it look nice, this pizza, okay? When it looks nice, it tastes nice. So next time you come to Tijuana, you have to come and try our pizzas. Then I will go with the anchovies. I like to use the, the salty anchovies. So in, in Europe, you go to some uh, parts of France and Italy, you know, they do the, the pizzas with the anchovies. I believe me, they give a great flavor. And not necessarily gets a lot of salt, okay? Very salty. 
So now we're going to put the muscles. We're going to go ahead and put, you know, many muscles. And then we have the shrimp, which the shrimp is already cut in half, okay? So we're going to put six pieces of shrimp. There we go. This looks amazing. And let me just uh, remind you that we are located just about seven miles from the border. So you have to come and visit us, okay? Then I'm gonna put some herbs de Provence, which is a little bit of oregano, thyme, rosemary. Everything is dry. So that will give it to the pizza a very nice and unique flavor, okay? So then I, had, I got my oven, uh, 400 degrees, and we are going to start to bake this amazing pizza, okay? This is gonna take about 12 minutes. Okay, now let's check our pizza. There we go. I love pizza. Fresh, nice touch with some flour, which I like it. And believe me, you have to come and taste this amazing, delicious seafood pizza at La Talier de Martin. We're located in Tijuana, so come and join us. Thank you for another show of Baja Window to the South. Well, thank you, Chef San Roman, for that delicious pizza. Did you see that? It was so good. Wow, you need to try that out. And we need to go and try that out as well, of course. And, but Olga, tell me, what goes better with pizza? Wine or beer? Beer. So let's go with Jesus to Mexicali and let's see what beer he has for us. Hey there, my friends. This is Baja Window to the South. My name is Jesus Castellanos. And today we are in Mexicali visiting some of the greatest craft beers, taps here. <laughs> and right now we are with Josue. Josue, Thank you, my Jesus. friend, Tigre Pintito. Great to have Man. you here. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's an honor to have you guys. Uh, Baja Window to the South. Uh, thanks for giving us the opportunity to uh, not only expose our, what we do, but why we do it. Ah, I love that, <laughs> I love that. So let's start with the first question. You guys started, I know that it's your dad and yourself yeah. started this project, but how did everything start? So, I mean, uh, I've been, I have had a huge passion for craft beer f over the years, uh, ever since I, I turned into legal, legal drinking age. Um, <laughs> <laughs> know, in I theory, in theory. <laughs> uh, I, I started, I, I fell in love with, with the craft, with, uh, with drinking craft beer, with uh, not only with the product itself, but making it. Uh, once I started learning how to make it, uh, like any other brewer, like any other project, anything starts like in a kitchen. You and with, uh, in my case, it was my mom's tamale pot. Uh, <laughs> I mean, and, and, and everyone starts there at some point. Um, but the, the hobby grew into me where, where uh, I fell in love, not, not with the product itself, but the making, the process of making With the beer. With all the process, it's, yes. it's, it's, it's really complex. It is. It's not, it's not just having malt and having hops and having, uh, it's just it's just matter of science, you I, know? I always describe it as being a, a, a blend or a mix between a chef or and a scientist at the same time because you, you handle, right. you're handling uh, pressures, you're handling temperatures, you're handling a lot of different variables, but you're also creating a craft where at the end of the day, it's a product that you're trying to, again, do or take certain notes of a specific ingredient to make it, again, a wonderful product or something that is drinkable. What are we drinking right now? Right now? It's a blonde style, yeah. but it has something special. I know that it has something special. I can smell it. <laughs> I feel it in my mouth. It's refreshing. It's amazing. Please, okay. describe this beer. So, so as I said, like when we when we're constructing beers, we're drinking pájaro en mano, by the way, uh, a super refreshing blonde ale with amaranth. In amaranth, it's a little, it's it's this little, small, yeah, small tea. This yeah, is, it's, it, a it's a cereal. Oh, it's a cereal. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, so okay. it's this small cereal that us as Mexicans we always eat yeah. on on this uh, candy yeah, that, we, that they yeah. call alegrías. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
when we discover or when we thought or discover it was it was a cereal, we were like, okay, let's let's use it. Wow, we just need to figure out how much we put into it. <laughs> Essentially, and that was that was when we go back to try and error. Describe to the people what are the flavors. So flavors. Yeah. yeah. So only aroma. Only aroma. So as a blonde ale aroma. Yeah. So a little bit on not necessarily it's this is gonna be a super refreshing beer. Something to yeah, drink. Yeah it is. Uh, one thing that we also think we we do really well it's we do we make beers for for a market. Uh, Mexicali it's a pretty hot town, so <laughs> we <It is. laughs> we try to make really refreshing beers. With that being said, we we did uh, a blonde ale that it's crispy. It's a little bit on the drier side. Uh, has a little bit of like citrusy yeah. notes. Uh, and some some light honey uh, with the amaranth. Yeah, and that's there uh, is. that's there is. and that's what uh, pajaron mano is. We experiment a lot, but we experiment with a basis. Uh, yeah. Again, we we just don't throw things around and expect that we're sold. Uh, we no, know we know what we somewhat might get, and we throw some things and we expect three results. There might be the one, there might be the second or the third, but we always know what we try or all the experiments have at least a goal. Uh, not necessarily it's something that you're just gonna toss and then see what we get. No, everything's actually thought of and, and well planned. Pintito is doing that great. My friends, this is Josue. As a young, young <laughs> fellow, which is doing magic with beers. You have to come over. Jose, where we can follow you on the social media? So you can follow us on uh, Pintito Cerveza, uh, and there you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and maybe TikTok, uh, maybe soon. <laughs> 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 Thank you, guys. My name is Jesus Castellanos. This is Baja Window to the South. Well, thank you, Jesus, for all those recommendations. They are great. We just love them. Craft beer all the way. And now we're going with Chef Jesus Escalera, who is going to show us some delicious desserts. Do you like desserts? La Postreria is a new concept in Tijuana about desserts, located in Plaza Peninsula. And it is not just any dessert. This is a creation full of beauty and excellent taste. Lo, eh, lo que queremos hacer aquí es darle al postre pues el lugar que se merece, ¿no? Hacer una cultura dulce donde el postre no es algo dulce al final de una comida, sino que el postre en sí es un plato muy importante, ¿no? Que te puede salvar un menú o te puede arruinar un menú. Yo siempre digo que de niño te castigaban sin postre. Por algo será, ¿no? Entonces, ¿por qué no hacer un sitio donde el postre sea el único protagonista? Yes, here in La Postrería, the main dish is dessert and the chef Luis Escalera from Sevilla, Spain, chose Mexico to start his project with his partner from Guadalajara and now they are here in Tijuana. En México es un país muy dulce, muy postrero, pues ¿Por qué no hacerlo aquí? Y bueno, es algo que yo repito mucho, que es que muchos ingredientes de pastelería, si, si México no existiera en el mapa mundial, el libro de pastelería se cae. No habría chocolate, no habría muchas frutas, no habría vainilla. Entonces, ¿por qué no hacer en México este proyecto tan dulce que sería de una manera más, muy icónica, no? And there's a difference between a traditional dessert and a dessert from La Postería. It's tremendous because it is served in the moment directly to your plate and there are endless possibilities to create. Uh, la principal diferencia que tiene es que se emplata en cocina y en ese momento se sirve. Entonces eso nos abre un abanico de posibilidades enormes. Juegos de temperatura, juegos de texturas que normalmente no se llevan bien, crujientes con cosas húmedas, acabados en la propia mesa para que el cliente tenga una experiencia mucho más diferente y también el jugar con sabores y montajes mucho más delicados. Yo en un postre plato te puedo poner un matiz picante, un matiz ahumado y es agradable porque es una cucharada del resto. En un pastel, si yo te pongo un pastel ahumado, ya es un poquito más invasivo, más agresivo, ¿no? Entonces el postre al plato abre un mundo de posibilidades muy interesante y por eso digo que lo que viene ahora en Tijuana entonces va a ser ya una arrastrada, pero de las buenas y de las bonitas. Thank you, Chef Jesús Escalera, for all those delicious desserts. Wow. I know, and the one who got lucky on that one was Scott. So let's see what desserts he's going to try today. All right, everybody, Baja went into the south today. We're at Plaza Peninsula. This is a fairly new mall here in Tijuana. 
and right behind me is La Posteria. I'm told this is one of the best places to get pastry in Mexico, definitely in Tijuana. Let's go check it out. This is the part where we try some desserts. So we're gonna try some of these amazing postres here uh, from Jesus Escalera and his crew. I'm looking forward to it. Let's see what we got. Ooh, look at this. Wow. Okay, they tell me this is liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen, that is what we're gonna use to finish this just beautifully aesthetic dessert. Okay, so this first dessert is lychee. Uh, on top of some nice fresh raspberries here, and there's rose mixed in, and it's a lychee ice cream. Um, and there's a special twist to this dessert, because here is liquid nitrogen. And what they're gonna do is, one of the awesome people here is gonna dip this little baby rose in the liquid nitrogen. And then I'm told it's edible. Look at this. Whoa. Ah, look at that. So it's a rose crumble after it's dipped in liquid nitrogen. That's beautiful. And see what we've got here. So gotta get a little bit of the ice cream. Uh, rose hips from, again, crumbled from liquid nitrogen. This is a first for me. Get a little bit of the lychee here. Take a bite. Mmm. Mm. Wow. I'd say the dominant flavor, because it's right on top, are the rose hips. And then you get a little bit of that lychee taste, you get the little aftertaste of the uh, raspberry. And what's really neat is the rose is actually crunchy. When did you have a crunchy rose? I never have. Delicious. And beautiful. Mm. All right, so uh, Chef uh, Jesus Escalera tells me this is a pairing. It's a pairing of a cam camembert cheesecake. And as you can see, it looks like a wheel of camembert cheese, which is super clever. And that's paired with a cherry, cherry wine, cherry wine ice, cream. ice cream, atop of pine nuts. How aesthetically pleasing. And I'm sure it's gonna be just as good as it looks. Let's dig in. This is one of those desserts that you almost don't wanna eat because it's too pretty. So we get a little bit of the camembert some of the pine nuts, and the cherry wine ice cream. Mm. Mm. Man, that is so good. Um, I'm a cheese head. I'm a cheese fanatic. I'm addicted to cheese. This is my kind of dessert. You really get that full flavor of the camembert there. Mm but in a really soft dessert cheesecake kind of way. This is as good as any New York cheesecake I've had before, better than the pine nuts and this cherry wine ice cream. Excellent. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. It's one of the best desserts I've had all year. Delicious. Very creative. Again, cheese uh, cake made with camembert cheese. Folks, it doesn't get much better than this. Oh my goodness, we look at that. Um, that is the singular, most beautiful, most creative presentation I have ever seen when it comes to any kind of postry or dessert. The theme here, the chef tells me, is the forest. There's a taste of eucalyptus fresh herbs, there's some sort of a marzipan used to make these uh, hongos, the mushrooms. Uh, it's pretty much creative genius. I mean, I don't even want to eat it. It's too nice. I'm sorry, I, no, I'm just kidding. I'm, of course I'm gonna eat it. So let's dig in. Let's take a little taste of this, uh, this hongo first, the marzipan. Mm. Nice. Okay, now we're gonna dig in. We've got eucalyptus ice cream. We've got fresh herbs. We've got some blueberries in there. Chef calls this a forest. Mmm, mmm. Wow. The dominant taste is the eucalyptus. I can't say that I've ever had a dessert with eucalyptus in it before. So this is very unique, very unusual, really, really good. 
Um, lots of good texture. I'm going in for another bite. Let's get a blueberry in this time. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's like an Oscar for desserts, this would be a winner. Just beautiful. Wow, very strong flavors. There's nothing subtle about this dessert at all. It's just bursting with flavor. Well, you know what? As dessert is the last thing, all good things must come to an end. Uh, I really highly recommend this place, La Posteria. Chef uh, Jesus Escalera, the guy's been doing this all his life. He's one of the best in the world. Come here, you won't regret it, you'll love it. And today we are with Carlos Castrejón with Proyector Paisano and he's going to tell us everything about what he is and his involvement in this beautiful project that involves both of the Californias. So let's talk about it. Is it just both of Californias or all of Mexico? Tell me. Well, um, initially, the, the way we started this project, um, it was my friend Luis Alderete. Mm -hmm. He's originally from Tijuana. And he mentioned to me that he was working on a project. This is 2014. In 2016, he gathered artists from Mexico, about 22, 24 artists, and he created the first exhibition with Mexican artists. Wow. So uh, most of the artists live in the region from Ensenada, uh, Rosarito, Tijuana, Mexicali, and even Tecate. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the whole idea was to be able to gather these artists and promote them and organize them and, of course, um, bring them into places to show their artwork. Beautiful. Now, the whole idea was for them to pick up their own artwork. We didn't, he didn't give us any type of guidelines to, let's say, uh, only drawings or only sculptures or only paintings. Each artist uh, can place his own artwork and so the first show that we had, it was here, not too far from here, at the Imac, oh, which wow. is at the Palace of Culture. Wow, I mean... I know. <laughs> so if the project was born in Tijuana, and the intention was to promote artists in the region, what a better place to do it in Tijuana. Wow. So that well, was... Go ahead, sorry. No, no, no. I, I was going to say, it is already impactful that you were able to unite those many artists. Yes, it's, it's definitely a labor of love and persistence and patience. You know, each artist is their own world. And so it was difficult in the beginning, but then later on as the project walked along with us, then it was a little bit easier. And so the doors were opening in different places. First it was in Mexico, but then the project jumped into the United States. And now we have this beautiful project that is being showcased. Tell us about that. Well, the project uh, started showing in, the, um, in California thanks to the help of the, the different Mexican consulates. So first we went to San Diego, we, we went to San Bernardino Consulate, Fresno, so and all the different places in, uh, in, the, in the United States is probably about 10, 12 different places. End up showing in some art galleries as well, like a Studio C Gallery and the Valencia Gallery wow. in San Diego. And um, I know you mentioned something, and I'm just gonna um, get back to that because you asked me if all the artists were only from the region of, of, of Tijuana or at the border mm -hmm. uh, or cities Baja. Mm -hmm. or Baja. No, some of the artists are born in Mexico City. Like in my case, I'm born in, in, in Veracruz. I was born in Veracruz. So yes, he gathered artists from Tijuana all the way to Quintana Roo, Yucatan, so. And I know very soon I'm gonna be interviewing your counterpart who is from uh, that, who's taking care of the United States uh, piece. So tell me about how you guys decided to, to uh, how, how, do, how does the process go for the artist to say, I want to be involved, or, or is that, or was that part of an involvement, or how, uh, how do the artists can uh, stay more motivated or continue to motivate you or participate? Well, um, I know that it's a continuous work. Now, Luis has done a, an amazing job. Luis is very meticulous. He's a perfectionist, and he wants this project to elevate the artists, elevate whichever country the artists are from. And in this case, it started with Mexico, and 
he wanted it to present to the world, to the Mexican artists. And so he picked each artist, and he invited a few artists. Like, you know, he says, you want to participate in this? Fill up the form. Yes. They send the first image, and then we gather the artwork, and that's how it was the first. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. It's Thank you for, for enjoying us and for inviting us to be part of this beautiful project. It just went beyond Mexico, beyond the United States. Now we're in Europe. So Asia, look out. We might be knocking on your door very soon. <laughs> Africa, I mean, you name it. Correct. You know, we might be all over the place. Congratulations. Thank and you thank so you so much. much for joining us at Baja Window to the South. Appreciate it. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Sí. Seguro. Well, hello everyone. Today in Baja Window to the South, we're gonna have a chat with a director, a screenwriter. He recently did this amazing short film. He's going to tell us all about it, of course. His name is Sergio Nolasco, and of course, it's another talent from Baja California. Sergio, muchísimas gracias por concedernos la entrevista, por estar no, aquí en Baja Window to the South. Gracias, gracias a ti. Y, y bueno, nos aventamos una muy buena platicadita antes de comenzar uh -huh. la entrevista, sí. pero sí quisiera que lo compartieras, uh -huh. por supuesto, con nuestra audiencia. Claro. Y sobre todo empecemos uh -huh. por este maravilloso corto que te acaban uh -huh. de premiar, que después de cinco uh -huh. años, como me platicas, sí. pues uh -huh. ahora sí que está en festivales uh -huh. y ya tú uh -huh. nos dirás. Sí, pues eh, ha sido un camino bien interesante de a las ocho, ¿no? Este... Uh, empezamos en 2018 la, el, el rodaje, eh, tanto escritura, rodaje y, 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 y el fin de la, de la producción terminó en 2018. Y fue a lo largo de los años que empezamos a trabajar la postproducción, viene la pandemia y pues nos retrasa todavía un año más, y este, pero pues lo seguimos trabajando. ¿no? Después de cinco años, eh, bueno, después de algunos años, en 2021 terminamos oficialmente la postproducción y empezamos a mandarlo, ya, ahora sí, eh, dijimos, ahí va su ruta, ¿no? Claro. Este, eh, pero, pero, pues, estuvo de mucho aprendizaje el corto porque, pues, creíamos que iba a tener una, una, eh, luego, luego, terminas un corto, quieres... Este, sí, ya, <risa> una exhibición, claro. otra y otra, y no, ¿no? Sí, Uno sí. de los aprendizajes fue eso, que hay que esperar el lugar y el momento preciso para que pueda eh, abrir los ojos y contar su historia eh, el corto, ¿no? Entonces, así, así, así ha sido. Digo, el corto, no he contado de qué cuento, pero, pero pues, eh, el corto habla, es una historia sobre Mateo. Mateo es un personaje... Uh -huh con determinada neurodivergencia que eh, es fotógrafo y en su soledad conoce a una chica que le ayuda a entender que tanto el amor como la comunicación no siempre es sencillo, ¿no? Entonces, claro. eh, bajo esa idea el cortometraje eh, tiene pues su curso y pues hasta, hasta ahorita, ¿no? Ahí, ahí va. Qué maravilla, ¿no? Y es que aparte es un tema universal que todos uh -huh. nos podemos identificar, ¿no? Definitivamente, sí, claro. comunicación, uh -huh. el amor. Entonces, bueno, sí, claro. yo en uh -huh. lo personal, la verdad que uh -huh. quiero verlo, definitivamente, uh -huh. no, a las 8. Y estoy, digo, para todos, donde uh -huh. pudiéramos tener uh -huh. acceso a él? ¿O eso va a ser posteriormente uh -huh. a? Dinos sí, un va a ser, va a ser, eh, será como el del 19 al 22. Tiene su estreno en México en el Festival Internacional de Cine de Tequila, en Jalisco. ¡Ah! ¡Felicidades! Ah, ¡Muy bien! Entonces, ahí es, es la premier mexicana y ahí vamos a ver en, si ellos habilitan alguna plataforma de visionado. Eh, el corto, hasta, por el momento, no, es, no está público porque pues continúa con su ruta, ¿no? Toda la información del cortometraje la van a ver en la página Films Raconteur, uh -huh. que es la casa productora con la que hicimos eh, este corto y parte de la que se hizo Hojas de Sauco también. Y eh, en nuestras redes sociales, la, mi, mis redes sociales son uh, arroba cernolasco uh -huh. y el productor Marco Sánchez es eh, Marco, uh, Marco Sánchez guión bajo yo, ¿no? Excelente. <risa> Entonces, claro. este, y ahí pueden conocer a todo el crew también, o sea, uh -huh. eh, 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 siempre estamos poniendo información sobre, sobre el cortometraje, sobre su ruta y sobre pues, lo que viene, ¿no? Pues ya no sé si algo más que quisieras agregar antes de... Mm, eh, pues no, muchísimas gracias por el espacio y <risa> este, no, de verdad eh, eh, creo que eh, es, para nosotros es bien, bien eh, importante, nos ayuda muchísimo la difusión, este, creo que uno de los detalles del cine en Baja California y en México en específico 
es que falta donde podamos mostrar. Ajá. Uh -huh. El objetivo, nuestro objetivo siempre ha sido seguir contando más historias uh -huh. a cada vez más personas, ¿no? Uh -huh. Entonces queremos seguir contando esas historias y queremos seguir llevándola a más personas, ¿no? Entonces sí. queremos buscar más lugares en donde poder eh, proyectar nuestras uh -huh. historias y que vean las historias, ¿no? Entonces, sí. este... Pues, eh, pues prácticamente eso, ¿no? Este, claro, muchas claro. gracias y pues, sí. creo que no hay nada más que eh, pues estén pendientes a lo que... 100%. Ajá, es, Vamos de a verdad. seguir brindando uh -huh. espacio, hay que apoyarnos, uh -huh. yo estoy de acuerdo en eso uh -huh. y verdad, de, de, de eso finalmente se trata, ¿no? Sí, Así sí. que, bueno, no, de nuevo, muchísimas gracias. muchas gracias, mucho éxito uh -huh. y thank you so much for joining uh -huh. us in this interview for Baja Window to the South with Sergio Nolasco. Director and screenwriter. Thank you, Denisa, for that interview. Cinematography ha, continues to impress us here in Mexico. Yes, and I love it, Olga. And also, we would like to remind you that if you want to visit Playas de Tijuana or Rosarito and use the scenic road, the toll road from Tijuana to Rosarito, it's available with no cost because the way from the border to Playas it's under construction so you can expect a little bit of traffic but you can still visit most definitely playas de tijuana and rosarito please like us share and comment let us know what else you would like to see here at baja window to the south yes and see you next week